And um, so I said yes. And so I've been there a little over 14 years. And we have about 500 chaplains, about 50 of, um, not chaplains, excuse me. We have about 500 employees. See, that's the blonde in me. We have about 500 employees. About 50 are female, and the rest are male. Um, and the, the male ones, uh, our male employees, most of them have wives or girlfriends. Some of them have both, but that's, that's a whole nother session. Um, but um, so there's quite a bit of opportunity there with, with women um, that you wouldn't think about in a race shop um, and in a, um, a racing environment. Um, but it also um, gives me an opportunity to kind of talk about what I've learned over the years about women and how God has made us and um, how we can be anchors, not only in motive sports, but in um, every area of life. And like I said, one of the definitions of anchor is to secure firmly. And um, I think that's a good way of thinking about our part and speaking of women, but also um, you men in this ministry world of motor sport, sports. And as we share the good news about Jesus, we are giving folks someone who they can anchor into. And teaching and sharing the word of God always helps to grow a solid foundation like an anchor. And once again, we have this hope, Jesus, as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. And I want to start, I want to look back um, in Genesis 2.18 with something I know y'all are all familiar with, where God has created um, Adam. And he says, you know, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper for him, fit for him. And so what I want to, we're going to focus on for the next little bit is just this, this word helper. God will make a helper or help meet fit for him. And I know sometimes when we hear that word helper or help meet, at least for women, we tend to think, hmm, that sounds like an apprentice or maybe a junior assistant or, you know, it doesn't sound real exciting. But I want to... Um, put some things before you to help you think about this a little bit differently. Um, actually, in the original Hebrew, the word helper or help meet is a word called azer. And it's spelled E-Z-E-R, but it, is, um, it sounds, you pronounce it as azer, azer. And uses of the word help or azer, the one helping does so from a, ex, a position of expertise and strength. And that's how we should understand the use of azer as it describes God and women in Genesis. This word appears in the Old Testament a total of 21 times. Twice it refers to Eve, the first woman. Three times it describes nations to whom Israel appeals for military help. And most significantly, 16 times it refers to God himself as the helper of his people. The word helper or azer, which I use interchangeably, does not imply that the woman is inferior or superior to the man. It is most used in the Old Testament in reference to God providing help. Exodus 18, Psalm 33, or of military aid as in Isaiah and Ezekiel. It is not a statement of, of our being, um, about our being, but it's a statement of role and function. It describes a type of relationship where the assistance of another is needed. Here, the woman will relieve man's aloneness that is, has been observed by God because he says it's not good for man to be alone. Not his subjective loneliness, although she will relieve that also. So that together they can fulfill their joint purpose in God's creation. Um, and in Psalm it says, surely God is my Azor. Help. The Lord is the one who sustains me. So the word azer in the Old Testament is closely connected with the military language. God is the helper of the nation of Israel, their sword and shield and deliverer. He is his people's ever-present rescuer from trouble. He is better than armies, chariots, and horses. He keeps watch like a guard over his people. And with his strong arm, he overthrows their enemies. That's the kind of help Genesis describes as coming from their Azer. And the Azer, who is woman, is made in his image, as man is made in God's image. So based on the consistent use of this term elsewhere in the Old Testament, it only makes sense to conclude that God created the woman to be a strong ally and warrior. 
with the man, fellow warrior. Fighting battles is not just for males. Females are called to put on our armor also, as we see in Ephesians 6. The description of Lady Wisdom, personified as a woman in Proverbs 13, is full of battle words such as valor, strength, and prey. So woman is man's co-regent and co-heir, co -heir, his um, mutual, I'm sorry, woman is man's co-regent and co-heir, his skilled colleague and fellow warrior, and a force to be reckoned with against their mutual enemy, Satan, on the battlefield of life. So woman is called Azer, and if, this, if a woman is married, this Azer is in a unique position to meet her husband's insufficiencies with her own strengths. Together, they can then reflect the image of God as strengths and weaknesses complement each other. The woman's presence in creation is the only addition needed before God can pronounce his creation not only good, but very good. She solves the man's problem, not that he needed an assistant because, in the, gar because the garden left him overworked, but that he was alone and now has an indispensable companion in their mutual task to rule and fill the earth. Someone once said, someone said recently, my role as helper or as azer is to help my husband in his calling. And that's true, I would agree. But equally true is the reality that the husband is to help his wife in her calling. Think of Ephesians 5. The husband is to present his wife without blemish and spotless before the throne. That is, he contributes to her spiritual thriving. It is not his job to be her instructor in all things spiritual. It is his job to help create an environment where she can use her gifts, bless others, and embody wisdom, stretching her hand to the needy, buying and selling, and teaching the word of God. And I want to give a shout out to my husband of that because he has done a really wonderful job um, over the years of really um, being my biggest cheerleader and really providing opportunities and encouraging me um, to follow the calling that God has for me. And he has, um, we've been able to serve together, but thank you for all the times that you've encouraged me um, to, um, to hear from the Lord and then to follow what the Lord had led me to do. Um, roles and seasons change. But our calling to love God first as disciples and followers of Jesus never changes. Women are bombarded in our culture with um, things like five ways to make yourself a better noun, whatever noun you want to put in there. So we often forget that our ability to carry out our roles with true excellence depends on our commitment to seeking God first. We are not after external behavior modification we are after internal heart and mind transformation. This is so important. A lot of Americanized Christianity is about making the outside look good without any change to the heart. But the grace that Jesus offers us and we offer to others is not clean up the outside and you'll be accepted, but come to Jesus. He accepts you as you are. He changes your heart and the outward follows. The reason I bring up this about women as azers is that this is what makes us many times can be an anchor in ministry here in racing and motorsports, um, coming alongside as maybe a spouse, um, helper to your husband and azer to your husband. Or I think of Billy, the, the wonderful women azers you have that, um, that support and, and come around and um, MRO, uh, I don't know that it would function without, if it was without the azers that um, Billy has. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Um, God's image in women includes defending, protecting, and nurturing those in our care. There are many facets in su to supporting and caring for the people of God. It may involve teaching the word to other women, helping to defend them from doctrinal error, or from worldly, worldly lies about their identity. It may take the form of a woman discipling another woman, helping her connect the dots from the gospel to her daily life. This broken world gives us many opportunities to bring Christ to those who are hurting in our midst. Counseling another sister, sitting in silence with those who grieve, are all examples of the ways we reflect God's heart for those he loves. 
In doing so, we are being life givers and bringing fresh hope into Christ's body and bride. The gospel gives the, us the framework we need to consider our helper, our azer design. We have no power in ourselves to lay our lives down to nurture life in others. But as Christ transforms us, we see more of the glory and beauty of the Savior who gave himself for us. As women, we do not all express this azer design the same way. Some were reflected in one way, some another way. We may reflect it differently in different seasons of life. And God has called you to live out this design in the particular relationships and circumstances he has called you to. When my husband Bob and I were called to become part of racing ministry, we had to figure out how that would work. Our three kids were small then, and we tried to travel together when we could. So I started homeschooling so we could travel more as a family together. And then once my kids, once our kids entered high school, I ended up, I stopped homeschooling and had to be home more just to um, deal with their schedules. But we always looked for ways to minister together in ways that our kids could be included. There were times it was hard to physically minister together, but we still kept working on it because we saw the benefit to others and it to ourselves when we could be together doing ministry. Um, and I'm not saying that my husband was not capable by himself of doing ministry, but it would just made it different and special and fruitful when we could do it together. And just a couple more things I want to talk about that I've observed over, the, over these many years um, of <clears throat> of women ministering um, with their husbands or men and women ministering together in a particular ministry, um, and especially in this racing arena. Um, and the insight and explanation of, of how God is our azer gives us insight into our helper role. And two ways that I've seen this um, in racing ministry is community and compassion. Um, there are more, but those are just the two that I wanted to look at real briefly. Azers are um, cultivators of community. The biblical meaning of community flows from the covenant. The covenant encapsulates all that is involved in our relationship with God, and it also gives definition to our relationships with each other. The people of God in the Old Testament were also people of the covenant. They were part of something bigger than themselves, and they saw how they needed each other. Paul in Ephesians reminds us that we were once separated from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenant of the promise, without hope and without God in the world, in Ephesians 2.12. Separate, excluded, foreigners, without hope. These words describe how many people feel today, especially after COVID. People feel disconnected and alone. God enters into a loving, protecting relationship with his people. He enters into community with us and comes to our aid, comforts us, and is merciful toward us. I believe entering into nurturing relationships and extending community to those in need is part of our design as an azer, the helper design. It equips us to infuse community and compassion into our relationships, and we do this in various ways. We are not clones. Our strengths, temperaments, experiences, opportunities, life stage, and interests will factor into how we fulfill this cultivation of community. It's probably an easier picture of seeing this being worked out in a church community, but in racing ministry, it's a powerful way to show who Jesus is and to talk about grace. I think women do a special job, maybe even an instinctive, um, even a, have an instinctive capacity to form relationships and to cultivate a sense of family. Um, for those of you that know Melanie Self, um, who um, she and her husband Monty run the community, the MRO Care Center. She has, she is a cultivator of community at the MRO Community Center. And I'm not, she does it so well and so beautifully. I'm not saying that men don't and can't make community. I'm not saying that at all. Women just do it differently. Some of you may be saying, well, I can't, I'm an introvert. Um, well, I am too. Um, but you can, how, you can learn how to cultivate and uh, make community. It doesn't make it any less beautiful or any less effective if you have to work hard to do it. God's covenant relationship with us is the source of our relationship with one another. And our Azer helper design helps furnish us with the tools to cultivate community. 
I could spend this whole time talking about community and the beauty and difficulty building it and keeping it healthy, but we don't have enough time. But community built around our faith in Jesus and loving others is pretty powerful today, and especially in, our, in this racing community. The second thing I want to talk about is that azers are channels of compassion. Compassion is from the Latin word calm, which means with, and patai, which means to suffer. It means to share a deep feeling or emotion with another person. As Paul said in Romans 12, 15, rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Of course, this instruction is given to all believers, male and female, but it does seem to be that as women, as azers, we are equipped to move, move easily and quickly into this emotional environment. We should find great freedom in unle unleashing this compassionate side of our being into arenas of ministry and mercy. God reveals himself as the helper of these, those needing compassion. And biblical, biblical compassion is very powerful. Um, it, this world does not see a lot of it. And to extend people real tangible compassion is hard. It's draining. But we are called to it. And of course, not just women. Men also are called to give out the compassion of Christ. But it looks differently from men and women. And different isn't bad. It's just different. Um, and if you read through the Gospels, you realize that Jesus had a group of women that followed and traveled with him and supported them financially. Um, and the disciples, him and the disciples on almost all his journeys, they weren't there because something was lacking in Jesus. But having these women, Azers, with him gave a fuller picture of the relationship of men and women and how they were called to serve God and spread the part, spread the gospel. They were part of a community. Um, <clears throat> one thing I did realize uh, I thought was interesting, and if you're looking at the Gospels and tracing Jesus' min ministry back and forth, I thought, gosh, this looks like a lot of like a racing schedule. You know, they went up here, and then they went down here, and then they went this way, and then they went back up and back down. And I'm like, oh, that sounds like um, February coming up when they start racing again. Anyway, I could go on and on and talking about women and Azers and how God uses us and how he has made us in his image to love and care for those around us. But I hope you can get a picture or glimpse of how important your role is in chaplaincy, ministry, and racing. Community and compassion are just two aspects of the Azer design. There is so much more. But I hope this gives you an idea and an encouragement and a vision for how God is using either you as a woman using your husband and you together, or maybe just you to other women. While we as women are like anchors as azers, we help to point others to the anchor of our soul, which is Jesus, where he calls us to anchor ourselves in him. Once again, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Um, and a resource, if you're interested in learning and reading more and about what I was talking about, uh, women as azers, the helper design, um, the gospelcoalition.org has a lot of stuff on that that's very, that's very helpful. Um, so I realize that um, some of the women here, you, you may um, work with your husbands in ministry. You may have just come to be with them this weekend. Um, but um, if you don't have a, a wife working with you in ministry or maybe you're in a ministry and there, there are women, y'all are working together, um, I'd hope you think about this and give some thought to um, you, there may be um, some ways that women um, working in ministry with you are being very underutilized, and they um, have some great strengths um, to add to um, ministry. Um, Bob and I have raised, this is a little personal, but we've, we have two daughters and a son, and we've raised, raised both our girls with that idea of how they are made to be azers. And just on, on a very quick personal note, it's come back to us as a great blessing. Um, our youngest, who is 32, is um, going into her um, third year of battling cancer. Um, it's back for the fourth time. And um, she um, has really ministered to us with her helper design, being an Azer. Um, and our oldest daughter, um, we have seen it really play out. Not only has she has ministered to our family, um, and use that, but to her own family and to, to her husband. So um, if, you, if you have wives, if you have daughters, um, or women that are close to you, um, look into this. 
and see what, what God, how he wants you to use it and how you can use it to make um, the community of God stronger. Um, and I think I have time if, you, if there are any questions you would have about anything, I guess. Um, I do um, a small group with women. I do I do some one-on-one -on -one of, um, and I end up talking to a variety of women. Um, some of them don't really have a relationship with Jesus. Some of them are not maybe that interested. Um, but we um, there are lots of things we find that we do have in common that we have a just start a friendship, a relationship. Um, so I do one-on-ones. We have a small ladies group, and then. Um, we do, um, I do luncheons for them throughout the year just to kind of get us together. And, um, yeah, we do, we have some social times. We have a lady at our organization who um, puts together social activities for, for the ladies, um, which I attend. And, um, but there are a lot of women that um, still won't, don't come to these gatherings. So I'm always looking for creative ways. During COVID, I once a week would um, go to the food court at North Lake Mall because it was real big and open. And, um, and I was there for women who just maybe wanted to come to the mall and we'd sit. And so we'd have women come, they could separate out. They didn't have to sit close. They could get food in the food court for those places that were open. It was just kind of trying to find a way to connect with women. So we're um, always looking for that. That's okay. That's okay. Anything else? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we, back when I said that we started homeschooling so we could travel with Bob Moore, and Tom Johnson Camping, I don't know if it's still here, offered us a, a motor coach. Um, for the racing season. Now, it's not these motor coaches that you see drivers in today, but it was, it was nice. It would sleep all five of us. It was kind of like a Winnebago type of, you know, that you didn't have to pull. You just drove it. Um, so um, we started out, and we got, we got all the way down um, 26 going to Daytona. <laughs> You're talking about the gas? Oh, okay. Well, we, we, we spent two weeks in the infield at Daytona, came back, I cleaned it all out, you know, res resupplied everything, restocked everything, tried to, you know, homeschool the kids during the week, and then we packed up and went to Rockingham for the weekend. And then we came back, and I was starting to unpack, unload, clean up, get ready to go, and I, I told him, I said, we need to talk. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, I think I'm done with the motorhome. <laughs> He says, what do you mean? I said, I, I can't homeschool, do the motorhome thing, and then come home and wash everybody's clothes and do all that, and, and I can't do it. I'm not a Wonder Woman. So I said, just turn it back into Tom Johnson camping. So he turned it back into Tom Johnson camping. So, yeah, that we had. But the story I was going to tell you was we're going to Daytona. He's never driven anything like this. We get to um, Orangeburg. We need gas. And so we're looking for a place where he can pull all the way through because we pulled our car, our, our minivan, we were pulling it behind us. And so we couldn't back up anywhere. So we pull in where he can get gas. And then I go in to use the restroom. I come back out and he says, uh, I have a, we have a problem. I said, what do you mean? He said, I can't find the gas where you put the gas in. So what do you mean? They didn't show you? He goes, no. And, and I didn't think to ask. So we're looking like, everywhere we can on this motorhome trying to find out where to put the gas and we can't find it. So finally, it, it's a little embarrassing. And so finally he asked some guy that pulled into the gas station, he says, by any chance, do you know where the gas thing might be on the motorhome? And he, I think it, what was it under the license plate? I can't remember. He found it. Yeah. So we knew that it was going to be a long, long road to Daytona. So. Anyway, thanks, thanks for letting me talk with y'all. Oh, he's got a question. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, 
Well, one of the things that I mentioned in here is it's really hard for women um, to let go of trying to make the outside look like they see on Instagram and TikTok. Um, to to have the perfect house, to look, you know, to to look a certain way on the outside, to have their kids, you know, dressed a certain way. It's hard to um, for them to feel like that's that's what they're trying to measure up to, and they can't. Because we all know that what we see in these snippets on Instagram, TikTok, it's not reality. These are all, you know, kind of staged. But helping them to understand that um, God is not looking for your outward um, behavior and um, things to look good on the outside. He looks at the heart. And um, God is not looking um, for us as women to perform, um, but to be faithful and open to him. And so that's one of the main things I see of helping women to let go of the performance mentality and really understand what grace is. Um, I think um, it's kind of a, like building a relationship, building a friendship. You, you, um, you start off and you just get to know the person. You know, what are, their, what are the things that they are passionate about? What do they enjoy doing? Um, finding some common ground. Um, you know, oh, you like that? I do too. Or, you know, it, it can be something you're viewing on Netflix. It can be any number of things. Just to try to find some, some common ground if you can. And also making it feel safe. Um, and um, giving them space to talk and to um, just be. And not have not for them to feel like you have an agenda. Anything else? Okay. Okay. Bob, would you come here for a minute, please? <laughs>